Oh, heading to what's happening in the Southern Mallee Giants footy side of things. And Coleman Shack is with me, the coach from some lovely little ups and downs out to the back of North Hopeton. He's with us now. G'day, Coleman. How are you? Afternoon, fine man. Good to join you again. Yeah, and what's happening out on there, uh, are those ups and down rises uh, on that road back, I think, from Hopeton to Lascelles sort of thing, the bit of dirt, um, that part of the country. Uh, is it um, is it wet enough out there from the rain last week? Uh, yeah, just monitoring a few crops. I've found a nice little hill to talk to you where I've got some service. But um, it is, it's, uh, it's really helped, I think, that late rain last week um, throughout our region in, um, in the Mallee. So, um, yeah, it's definitely um, made the crops jump a little bit and the warm weather there growing quickly so it's good to see. Good to see hoping for another lot of the moisture to arrive, hoping for football to arrive and well training returning and I'm told Coleman that uh, the boys were pretty keen to get out onto the track uh, on Saturday morning at Beulah. Yeah whether they're keen or not so man we've got the session going Saturday morning so um, no but talking to most of the fellas it's just yeah keen to, to see each other really like you can't catch up with everyone um you can't couldn't have a kick of the footy with each other two uh in more than two so everyone's just keen to have a run around and catch up so um it'd be good to have a blowout and yeah see see which fellas have been doing a bit bit of running and keep them fit and yeah it'll be um yeah good good fun to slowly getting out of lockdown i suppose yes yeah, so, uh, no heavy tackling i would assume would that be the go uh, sort of on the first run around no, no, we could potentially be in a final any time for man. We don't know what's going to happen. The government could yeah, get us out of lockdown or send us back, but either way, we'll go straight into it, I reckon. All right. So uh, at the Bueller Oval, um, Hopeton, what's happening up at Hopeton? Uh, is uh, something to do with the cricket pitch now being fixed up? It is. So I think they've got uh, their underwork today. I think they started on it, Tommy Hoof and... Um, and the cricket club, they're, they're putting a new... Yeah, I'm not sure if it's two or three pitches down, but they're reclaying it all. So uh, the boys have been booted off the oval, which is no worries. We've got, yeah, lovely oval down in Bueller. So we'll, um, yeah, train the remaining the remaining weeks down there for what, what potentially is left. Yeah, so uh, Coleman's summer season's not a hit uh, and a catch. It's a, um, a hit with a tennis ball. Uh, is that more your style and uh, any good at it? Uh, yeah, personally, yeah, I uh, play uh, play ten- don't like to play tennis. No, it's good fun. They've got a good uh, good club running um, in Houghton, so they do a good job there. And yeah, no, it's good fun. I think they've had a bit of success the last couple of years. Uh, Taylor Donald, your man in the reserves, he's the president of the uh, the tennis club. So yeah, he does a good job. Yeah, okay. So uh, what number does Taylor play, and uh, what number do you play? Does, is there a bit of a role reversal there? Does he uh, does he keep you down the list a little bit? Yeah, he does, but that's probably fair enough with uh, with my commitment um, to the tennis. And, yeah, he slots himself in um, number one, which um, yeah. Yeah, I don't see many people kicking him out of there while he's president. Yeah, and uh, is he any good, though? That's, that's the question. Everyone uh, so, you know, wants to know, you're obviously the footballing prowess, but does, can Taylor hit, it, hit the ball a bit of a Mark Philippousis? Oh, it depends who you're asking, I'd imagine. But, uh, no, he goes all right. He goes, he does, yeah, hits a very hard ball. I reckon he would. Hey, um, that, that sort of brings us to uh, the protocols to return to play. Obviously, a, uh, AFL uh, Wimmera Mallee have put out the um, protocols for training. But um, with the, the return to play, you blokes, uh, would you be able to play in front of uh, no crowds next week? You'd be ready to go? Oh, we'll have to be ready to go whenever we're yeah, told to. That's sort of what's happening at the moment. We've yeah, we've got not much more idea than, you know, the general public on when we're gonna start playing again. It's all dictated by what happens um at the government, what what rules are relaxed. Um so all we can do is yeah, be be ready to go. We can train now so we can get around each other, which makes it a bit more easy to be motivated. It's um it's definitely hard at times. Um to, to keep the motivation levels high enough to, to be fit enough, ready to play a game of footy. But at the same time, yeah, you've got a chance at a final spot. And um, 
if that yeah, opportunity arises, you want to make sure you're ready to go. So, yeah, we'll just we'll just keep trading along and enjoying it and keep sticking around each other. So if you ended up um, with, say, a game uh, that you play in the first week in October, first weekend of October, um, how close is that to, say, the cricket and tennis and uh, bowls and other things starting up? I mean, do their seasons start at the end of October? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when they do start up, but even even when we just finish the season um, at a normal time, there seems to be only a month month gap in between the two seasons starting. So I'd, I'd imagine that yeah, three or four weeks, um, and you'd be straight into tennis. So yeah, um, yeah. Ho- well, hopefully that that's the case. Anyway, we're we're freed up a little bit, and yeah, can can get back to a bit of normality. Yeah, hopefully, I think for those um, the sports, because they'd be watching what's happening with the finishing of the football. The you know, Clearly, they don't have the crowd issue uh, to play uh, their sports um, uh, with uh, you know, probably bowls clubs, the only one needing to be concerned more with just the numbers in club rooms and all those sorts of things. But um, this is uh, a really interesting time for all of our country sports and our summer sports looking to get going and, and just the enthusiasm for people to get together coming out of uh, a time where you haven't been able to get together for uh, training or physical exercise for any more than two people. Uh, the opportunity to play again, uh, maybe it will be uh, a groundswell of interest in summer sport, Coleman. Yeah, I reckon you're spot on there. Like, um, but yeah, a way a way for the community. Like, obviously with the bowls, sort of the old the older crew there, um, catching up with each other, and then yeah, with tennis and and cricket, and yeah, just just ways um, yeah to keep involved in the communities around here, and yeah, hopefully with yeah, like you said, touched on before with the. Um, less numbers needed to be involved. You'd like to think those types of sports, they're low risk and, and would be able to go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, fingers crossed that you get out onto the field next weekend to play and uh, also uh, for the training that no injuries for you, lads. You've had a pretty um, a difficult year with some of your better players. Obviously, some of the ki- the blokes from uh, out of Melbourne won't be able to come and play at this stage. Is that going to be an issue initially for you, Coleman? Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have... Um, um, a few boys in the um, seniors and reserves unavailable, and I'm like, yeah, not sure about the netballs, um, how much it affects them directly, but um, yeah, that's just just another hiccup, another hurdle that yeah we've had to overcome this year. Obviously, um, with the travelling players, that's yeah coming from metro areas, that's um, one of one of the negatives about that, I suppose. So um, we'll, we'll just do what we can do, and you know, fingers crossed, those boys can come up here and have a kick with us, and um, you know, have a beer with us, so we can see each other all again. It's been a while, so yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be great. Um, well, the under fourteen boys um, uh, and uh, the thirteen and fifteen netball girls will be having their medal count, um, and that will begin uh, on Monday night on Zoom, and then uh, it's the seventeen-year-olds um, in the netball for Hopeton uh, or for uh, the Southern Valley Giants um, who will be having their count um, through the week. Um, the Bs and the other grades of netball and the football, the reserves in the football and the other grades of netball will be uh, later on the Monday the following week and Wednesday for you blokes for the Tui medal. Um, uh, any thoughts on the Tui medal, Carmen? You, you reckon you'll poll well yourself? No, I don't think I will this year personally. Um, but what well, we touched on there, the other time, we have a few boys um, that will definitely pulse some votes, winning a few games. Boy White will start off on a house on fire, I reckon, early, and his brother might steal a few off him um, in the middle of the year there. Um, so, uh, but yeah, there's some, definitely some um, good players uh, running around the league. A couple of the McIntyre boys over at Minyip. Um a couple of the um, Tommy Eckel from Stall, they were hit no doubt those type of players, good midfield players that kick goals, they'll be they'll be up um, pretty high, I would have thought. Yeah, very much so. We'll chat more about that next week um, as the preview for the medal count and hopefully football returning to the fields uh, either next Saturday or the following Saturday, uh, which would be the AFL Grand Final um, getting closer to that Saturday, which will be interesting in itself. We'll catch up, Coleman, with you next time. Appreciate it, Flo, man.